When Japan beckons, you might like to try a visit to the island of Kyushu if you prefer your travels to be off the beaten path. Isolated from the Japanese mainstream and closer to Korea and China, traveling through Kyushu, you can be on the trail of Shinto temples, samurai cities, the largest colony of monkeys in the world, and the secrets of Japanese porcelain. Kyushu is actually uh, the southernmost uh, island in Japan, and I think it's probably the least known to, to Westerners. Um, it's, parts of it are quite tropical, so you have the feeling of being on a South Pacific island, as well as the advantage of, of being in Japan. And a lot of people think that they're closest to the, the old Japan, uh, the Japan that, that, that's more uh, rural and, and relaxed, and, and mainly not that well known to tourists. In the center of Kyushu is Mount Aso, with its gigantic and still active volcanic caldera. The crater has an 80-kilometer circumference and accommodates towns, villages, and trains. It's also part of a massive national park, with plenty of walks and scenic stops along the way. It's ideal for family outings, and you can enjoy a local favorite, barbecued corn on the cob with a soya sauce. Active volcanoes usually mean hot mineral springs, and Kyushu has a wealth of onsen or spas. The therapeutic sand bath at Takagawara in Beppu is not a place to be coy unless you're being filmed. It may look weird, but being covered in red, hot, black volcanic sand is quite the experience. And wherever there's a hot spring or spa, you'll generally find a ryokan, where you can enjoy the hospitality of a traditional Japanese inn. We have um, so many different type of ryokan. Some ryokan is very, very old, with a quite old style of Japanese lifestyle. But at the same time, now we have uh, ryokan combining all the wonderful part of the uh, Western style hotel. So some ryokan, you can stay, of course, on tatami mat, but some ryokan even have a Western style bed to give the comfort. The ryokans are generally owned and managed by ladies known as okami. Some inns have been in their families for generations, and you're treated as if you were an honored guest staying in a private home. Onsen crazed Beppu is also the land where you can literally go to hell. The hells, or jigoku, are a collection of colored and intermittent hot springs, some jetting as high as 20 meters into the air. Ironically, these hells are in heavenly locations, with massive lily ponds fed by their steaming blue and blood-red waters and volatile geysers. The water is so hot, you can even boil eggs. At neighboring Oita, another popular attraction is the Big Eye, a soccer stadium built for the 2002 World Cup. It has a retractable dome and can be converted for other major sporting events and concerts. And high in the mountain rainforest, midway between Oita and Beppu, is Mount Takasaki Monkey Park. It's meal time. A feeding program was instituted over 60 years ago when the monkeys started raiding nearby farms. And today over 2,000 wild Japanese monkeys live here in three separate colonies and are free to roam the mountain. And you cannot leave this region without visiting Kitsuki City, once home to samurai warriors. Built in 1394, Kitsuki was the castle home of Lord Matsudaira and now houses a collection of samurai armor and weaponry. But it's not just the castle that intrigues visitors. Barely 150 years ago, warriors walked these streets and built their homes here. Mr. Nishi, the curator at Ohara Tai, describes the lifestyle of the samurai. May I pray as the Lord? <laughs> and shows you how a Lord would have greeted his guests. Uh, this is a flight style. Flight style, and uh, like this. The samurai code was based on a combination of Confucianism, Buddhism and Shinto. 
still very important aspects of Japanese life. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.